hop on. Make sure that the volume and everything is good. Let me know that you can see me and hear me. And I am so excited to be here live today because I have a really special live stream for you guys. I haven't gone through, I feel like in a minute, all of my like stages, my stages of inner work. And so I thought this would be really fun to hang out here and go through the various stages. Okay, I'm looking over here because I have my chat open here. Awesome. Okay, we can see you and hear you. Awesome. Thank you so much for letting me know. Okay, let's get started. So who here already in the chat, let me know, already knows what stage you're in. So for those of you guys that are new to my work, I have four stages of our evolution through life as we go through in our work. And the reason that I had developed these stages was because I'm gonna go back into my childhood actually. This is a conversation that I have oftentime with my kids and I'm sure you can relate to this. When I was a little girl, I used to think that as time moves forward, as the arrow of time goes forward, we just get wiser and smarter. So I thought the older you are, the smarter you are, the older you are, the wiser you are. Like I just thought that that was just a thing. And so I was like patiently just like waiting to get older and be smarter and wiser. Like that's just how I thought it was. So as you can imagine, when I was in my early 20s and I was in college and I was, you know, I had then I started my business, I was meeting a lot of people and it was like my heart was broken when I realized that age had nothing to do with wisdom, that it wasn't the arrow of time that was going to make you smarter, that the arrow of time could just pass you by. You could live 50, 60, 70, 80 years on this planet and be literally doing the same stuff, thinking the same thoughts that you were doing in your childhood. You could be stuck there. And I also met people that were so young, you know, teenagers, early 20s, um, late 20s, early 30s, and they were just wise beyond their years. It seemed like in their short time on this planet, they had lived lifetimes. They had processed so much. They had experienced so much. And that's where inner work really became the forefront of importance in my life. It became a priority because I realized that I couldn't just be like those people that just sat there as time passed me by and nothing changed for me, right? So that's how I came into inner work and realizing that I needed to take my own wisdom, my own evolution, my own intelligence into my own hands because I could have the biggest potential on this planet, but if it, it was left untapped, unactivated, then what was the point, right? Like nothing was gonna come out of it. I was just going to waste it. So this is how I, ended up, you know, years later, decades later after this realization, through doing my own inner work, starting this uh, this online university, I developed these four systems. They were literally downloaded through me when I was in meditation. I remember I shared the story with many of you guys. I was literally in a meditation and these four um, names were revealed to me, these four stages. And I remember keeping my eyes closed and my husband was working next to me on the computer. This was like early morning. He was working from home, he was on the computer. I was meditating and I remember just keeping my eyes closed and I'm like, open up a Word document and start typing this. Type this, type this fast. And he's like really confused. So he pulls out, you know, the Word document and he's just like, I'm just like spitting it out at him. And I'm like, okay, next line, basic babe, right? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm just spitting it out and he wrote it. And at the end of it, I just had these beautiful, four stages and the interesting thing was that even though I had many courses already at this point this wasn't in the beginning of my my university journey like the university that I've developed it was really bizarre because it was like every single course that I had fit beautifully in these stages it was almost like I knew about the stages not consciously but subconsciously and I developed these courses that fit in perfectly into these stages. In fact, some of my students that have been with me for 10, 11 years following me on YouTube, even before I had the online university, they have mentioned this, that they can't believe because they've been following my journey so far, so well. And these were the exact words of my, one of my earliest subscribers. She says she was like the first 20 people to subscribe to me on YouTube. She said, it's almost like 
someone is guiding you and that person knows the journey, like it all fits together, even though you seem to be working in this linear manner, but it all makes sense. And so that, that was the beauty of these four stages. And I absolutely love these stages. I love how my work, just even some of the courses that were developed before I even came up with these stages, they were shown to me. They just fit so beautifully in. So the first stage is the basic babe stage. Let me see what you guys are saying as far as which stage you fall into. Uh, okay, I'm gonna move my computer here so I can read this. Currently, I am between the basic babe and self-aware Barbie. Beautiful. Doing my inner work with the basic babe bundle. Wonderful. I'm a little bit of everything, but maybe more of a self-aware Barbie. So you guys bring up a really important point that I must, must start with before I go into these stages. These are stages of consciousness. They are stages of inner work. They are not absolutes they are think of them as these energies that exist in all of us men and women and in fact i want to become more conscious of including men in these stages because some of you guys want to start doing inner work with your husband with your children right with your sons maybe your brother your colleagues and i often get asked you know, how does this relate to men? So wherever I can, I will throw in little tidbits because even though I'm using very feminine names for these stages, that's how it was re revealed to me, but they do, obviously they work for men as well. We just have to make little tweaks. So think of these four stages as four different paradigms of realms, okay? Think of like these four, um, think of it as a high rise building. Okay, so the lowest form is the basic babe, and then there is self-aware Barbie, and then there's million dollar babe, and then there's high end divinity. But there are, uh, on this skyscraper, there's a, these are four realms, but you could be in between realms. So for example, you could be a self-aware Barbie that also has lots of basic babe moments. You could also be a self-aware Barbie that has lots of million dollar babe moments, right? Because, you know, human beings are multi-dimensional. We're not like, here's your PhD and you're, and you're now a million dollar babe, right? You know, we, my students in our Zoom calls and in the live sessions, you will hear, hear people saying, oh my God, Mina, I had a self-aware Barbie moment, or I had a, a, a basic babe moment with my husband. And I want you to realize that, that this is not about judgment. This is not about us versus them. This is not about, well, I'm a million dollar babe and she's a basic babe. No, because we all have all of these energies and the capacity and ability to invoke any of these energies in us at any given time. And the more inner work you do, the more you can actually reside intentionally in the stage that you want to be at that time. So it is a moment to moment dynamic, okay? So the first stage is the basic babe or the basic dude if we're talking about men. And I want you to know that most people on the planet right now, unfortunately, are in this stage, especially in the Western world. So this is the stage of the adult child. So think of this stage as the wounded feminine or the wounded masculine. There is a, uh, a core inner child or many core inner child wounds. And so because of that, it's we ex, we see you and you might be a grown person but your tendency is to revert back to that inner child wound so if you are in relation to in relationship with a basic babe but uh, with the basic babe i was gonna say basic babe bundle with a basic babe or a basic dude here's what you need to know when these people are triggered they revert back to their childlike state the things that they say to you, the, their behavior will not make any logical or rational sense at that time. And expecting it to is just going to make your head spin and, and really frustrate you. So you guys have probably seen these little skits going around on YouTube and, and I'm sure other platforms where, you know, Walmart camera or whatever, store camera, Costco camera catches these adults in moments where they are literally throwing a tantrum. Let me know in the chat if you have seen this. 
okay? Also, please take the, a moment to give this video a thumbs up. Definitely more people need to see this work. So help with the YouTube algorithm by doing that. So you will see that if you, let's say that you're married to someone who often has tantrums, like full on tantrums, you are dealing with someone that has inner child wounds and they revert, their natural tendency when triggered is to revert back to the basic babe stage or basic dude stage, okay? Yes, definitely seen those, okay? So um, you know what I'm talking about, right? When they are triggered, or even when they're not triggered oftentimes, this is just their natural state, depending on what, where they fall on the continuum. If they're like full on basic babe, they are, might be a, a, a hopeless case at this point for the average person to deal with, okay? But if they're like 50% basic babe and 50% self-aware Barbie, okay, you know, that's, that's workable. You can have some kind of a relationship with them. You probably have encountered these people because they're everywhere. They're coworkers, they're our siblings, they might be our parents. And what happened was something really big happened in their childhood. And remember this, big doesn't mean big to you and me. Big doesn't need, need to be big trauma. It could be something that the five-year-old or six-year-old version of them, the undeveloped brain of a child perceived as big. So for example, when they were six, they came home and they were excited to show this painting that they made to their parents, but they felt like their parents ignored them and, and gave attention to their brother instead. To you and I, that might be like, okay, you were five, get over it, right? But at, in the undeveloped brain of that child in that moment, it registered as a traumatic experience and so now their brain went for looking for more signs of that and then protecting them of that. And so when they are 35 and you ignore them because you're working on something important or you're distracted, their brain reverts back to that scenario of when they were five or six and they got, do you see where I'm going with this? So when triggered, and I know this happens a lot because when I coach people, my clients will say, Mina, it's like my husband, when he's triggered, he makes no rational sense, but otherwise he's such a smart, amazing, intelligent person. And so that's exactly it. Because when, when we're triggered, we revert back to that dominant state inside of us. So your, your weakest link is going to be how you behave during those triggers and then you will know whether you behave as a basic babe or a self-aware Barbie. Because anyone can pretend to be a million dollar babe when everything's great. Sure. When you're having the perfect day, everyone's saying the perfect things, right? It feels good. Everything's high vibe. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a million dollar babe right now. But how do you behave in those moments when you're triggered? That shows me more about what is your dominant state. So now if you were, if I were to ask you that question again, what is your dominant state right now? And of course we can do inner work and I'm gonna talk more about that. We're gonna you know, talk about doing inner work to change our dominant state. But when you are triggered, what is your state? What do you revert back to? Okay. I'm gonna wait for you guys to, I know there's a lag between you seeing me and then, yeah. So I'll, I'll give you guys a chance to answer that. See what you're saying. Yes, I see this all the time. Wow, this makes so much sense. How, can, how you can embody different stages at different times. This goes, um, this get go. I love your analytical mind, Mina. This is life changing and just our understanding of being and connected. Yes. So it is estimated that 97% of the people in the Western world are in the stage right now, in the basic babe stage, meaning they revert back to it. So think of the average person driving to work and then something triggers them. How do they behave on the highway? 
you know, are they giving everyone the finger and honking and trying to cut them off, right? Like all of that, like that's the basic babe stage. Does that look like rational, logical behavior to you? No, okay? The world's prisons and mental institutions are full of people in extreme basic babe situations where they lost control, got triggered, got triggered, lost control, and acted out in a way that was hurtful to either themselves or others or, or private property. So th this, this is a lot of people. Unfortunately, not everyone is out there doing the inner work. And I you know, hope that this is changing now because we have more access to information and we have you know, access to free information like this, this channel and lots of other you know, avenues like books and, and all these different things, right? I'm, all, I'm so surprised in the last two years how many businesses are now paying for my clients in our work, meaning my clients will buy courses from me and coaching packages and their employers are paying for it because life coaching is now covered in by employers. So I love this because people are recognizing the importance of inner work. It is a huge liability for businesses, for p individuals to be in relationship with people that are in basic babe stages. And I'm not talking about, you know, had a little tip triggered moment here or there because there are stages of even the basic babe, right? I'm talking about lashing out, slashing tires, right? Um, getting drunk and having inappropriate behavior, stalking people. I'm talking that about the things that get people in tr trouble. So I'm gonna give you some other examples of how to spot basic baby to be more childish behavior. I'm not talking about childlike playfulness because that is one of the flavors of the divine feminine. That is not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is just this inappropriate childlike behavior, okay? So um, an example of this is in their voice. Sometimes you'll notice, a lot of times actually you'll notice that women who are in extreme basic babes have a very childlike voice. We think they're doing it purposely and sometimes they are, but a lot of times they can't help it. Like literally their growth got stunted in this time period in like five, six, seven year time period and that's like the voice is locked there. Let me know in the chat if you have met these people. You can probably even think of celebrities that have an unusually childish voice or way of speaking. So in my life, what I've seen is they'll say things like, uh, I'll use like actual comments and things that I've heard. But Mina, isn't it bad for you to be eating meat? Tell me if you've heard of these kind of tones. Okay, but Mina, what if he doesn't want to marry me? Tell me if you heard these before. Do you see, it, it, there is a mom, but mommy, I don't wanna go to bed right now. Do you see the similarity in the way that it's spoken? But Johnny's mom said that he can go ride his bike right now. So even though they're adults, they're legal adults, their tendency is to revert back to very childlike voice, tone, questions, okay? They need, internally, they need mother energy. So they will grab it towards, towards people that have more of that mothering energy. The entire industry of therapy as we currently know it, this is slowly changing. As we currently know, the entire industry of therapy was made with this concept in mind. So when you look at what, how therapists do their thing, well, how do you feel about that? I'm sorry you experienced that. What are they giving you? Mother energy, male or female, right? They're trained to say, that must have been very hard for you. It's mother energy. And basic babes, they, they can get easily triggered by your tone of voice. They can get triggered by your boundaries. They can get triggered by your goddess energy. They can get triggered by your looks. They can be triggered by your adulting. 
they can be triggered. And so if you have these people in your life, you will feel like you're walking on eggshells because you can't, you feel like anything you say can trigger them. So they respond really well to mother energy. Now, teachers that teach in more of that mother energy tone will often get a whole bunch. In fact, in fact, I have to tell you something. This is a little behind the scenes secret. So I don't know if this is still true of YouTube, but back in the day when I had, I don't know, I remember I had like 10,000 followers. I was uh, approached by YouTube and they had given me this exclusive training to basically YouTube finds creators that they think are worthy of investing their resources in and they will give you free coaching. This was back in way back. I don't even remember. I don't know if this is true anymore, but this was like 2015, 2016, 2015 probably or earlier. And they invited me to this huge seminar and gave me all this training. And one of the things they talk about is that the average consciousness on YouTube is that of a third grader. So if you want to grow your channel really big, really fast, you have to talk to your audience as if they're in third grade. I don't know if this is still true, but this was the information that I received at the time. And I, I just can't, I can't with that. <laughs> I am not a third grader. I am not wanting to appeal to a third grade consciousness. Even my children, my daughter is a third grader and she's not in third grade consciousness, right? You can have really up-leveled conscious discussions with her, right? I refuse to talk to adults like they're third graders. And so that's why I don't have millions of followers because I'm talking in a higher level of consciousness and I'm not gonna sit here and talk to you like you're a child. I just don't, I can't do that. So that's just not me. But the if you are someone that's easily triggered i would recommend first and foremost getting therapy you do need some of that like mother energy reframing um learning how to manage yourself in those heightened states of emotion life coaching isn't necessarily the best route to start with if depending on where you are okay so the difference between therapy and coaching is therapy is very much let's go into your childhood and see what happened and bring you to current state. So therapy assumes there's something missing and we're gonna bring you back to your normal state. Coaching set is, think of coaches. Who Michael Jordan's coach wasn't saying, something's missing in Michael Jordan, let's bring him to normal. Michael Jordan's coach said, Michael Jordan's freaking amazing, let's take him to his next level. So coaching is forward moving. It takes you to the next level. Who used to hire coaches before it became a thing that you know the normal person can access? Celebrities, royalties, athletes, right? Politicians, like people who were brilliant and masters of their craft and they wanted to go the next level. So when a basic babe shows up to life coaching, it's not usually a good match. Unless this coach is using purposely therapy-like models and wanting to do the mother energy thing. That is not what I do. You guys know that, okay? So I am not going to be a good coach for that state. Having said that, I have a bundle, a course called the Basic Babe Bundle. It is not for early stage basic babes at all. It is for people that are in the self-aware Barbie, but sometimes revert to basic babe stages. In fact, even people in Million Dollar Babes have taken that bundle. It's my highest selling and absolutely people love it. it I, we recommend everyone start there with my inner work. And so we've had in, in the, since 2017, when the basic babe bundle was first, you know, uh, created, we've had two or three people sign up out of tens of thousands of students in that bundle that didn't belong there because, and how did we know is that they'll start taking the bundle and every module they watch, they will email us asking those childlike questions. But it's only happened two or three times. This is, this is intentional because I purposely do not cater my content for that group, not because of any sort of discrimination, but simply because I feel therapy would be better for them. I am not, I wouldn't be, my work would not be a, the best match. They need to first get to a state where they can start taking personal responsibility 
and accountability for their actions, for their emotions, for their behavior, and get into more of a adult-like state so that they can move forward. And that's why I recommend it. For the basic babe, their biggest, I don't want to use the word handicap, but really I'm going to, I'm going to use that word because I can't think of anything better right now. Their biggest crutch, their biggest issue is their perception. So their biggest issue is that they do, they do not perceive reality from the eyes of an adult, but they are expected to do so because they are legal adults. Because when we see them, we see an adult. And so there is an expectation for them to behave like an adult, but their perception is one of a child. So that's why when people ask me questions like, you know, what if he doesn't want to marry me? What my husband said this, my friend said this. If I sense that they are in a basic babe stage because of the way they're phrasing the question and the childlike tone that they're using, I, I don't try to coach them and, and help them because their perception may be twisted. I can't tell you how many basic babes I've met in my life that thought their husbands were narcissists, but they were the problem. Their husbands were normal people. Obviously, they were the reciprocal of this kind of a partner, so they had their own issues, but they were not what their, they were not what their spouse was perceiving them as. So your perception, remember that the eyes are not a camera, they are a projector. So if you are in the basic babe stage and your growth is stunted and you revert back to childlike behavior, you may be 35, but you may be viewing certain events as if you were seven. So your mom could be having tea with your adult brother and you might be seeing it as her abandoning you and favoring him. And then you might come to me and say, my mom is a narcissist and she loves my brother and she hates me, but I can't coach you on YouTube at least, right? Because your perception of even what you're saying is twisted right now. So that's why I recommend in, the, in that level, you wanna go to therapy first. And our partners are, uh, we're sponsored by BetterHelp. You guys know it's one of the few collaborations that I've done or affiliates. I don't, I, I reject 99.9% .9 of the people that reach out for me to me for affiliate. Uh, but I, I go with BetterHelp because I have actually done therapy with them. I highly recommend them. A lot of my students have had really amazing results with them. So they offer all of my people 10% off their monthly package. I also like that you don't have to leave your house. You can do it in your house. So that link is in the description box all the way down. Team Universe Goo, if you can grab that from the description box, scroll all the way down and put that in the chat for the people. So if you need therapy, I love therapy. I think there's a, a place for that in everyone's life at certain stages. So you might need to go get a couple months of therapy, you know, and then and then you can come back to a state where your your perception is more in line with your re actual reality and your age, your your human age, and not your consciousness, and so that you can start actually moving forward. Okay. So let me think if that's all I wanted to say about the basic babe bundle or and the basic babe stage. And then I'll move on to the next one. What are you guys saying? Let's check in with everyone. Love your advice and vibe, Mina. It's helped me preserve and protect my energy. I'm awesome. I'm happy to hear that, surfer girl. Okay, let's see. You're always on spot, Mina. Thank you, babe. Where are our level up queens? I'm gonna take see if any of our members have any questions coming up. Okay. Yes, when they get triggered, they sound like OMG, wah, 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 and bang on desk or themselves. They can be very childlike. I can remember being a basic babe. We've all had those moments. Okay. Yes, <laughs> we don't have questions because you're in the million dollar babe stage. I hear you. 
Okay, there is the better help link in the chat. Thank you. All right, so let's move on to self-aware Barbie. Okay, self-aware Barbie is the stage where your masculine and feminine have been thrown out of sync. So what we're the best self-aware Barbie, this is the second stage, is born is there is an actual traumatic experience in life where you, if you are a woman, you have been put into your overactive masculine energy, especially in the West right now, this is like most women are put into their masculine energy just from our schooling and upbringing. And if you are a man, a self-aware Ken, let's say, then you're put in, you kind of put in your, your overactive feminine. And remember that as full, whole human beings, we all have masculine and feminine polarities within us, right? So as a full, whole woman, I have masculine energy within me and feminine energy within me. Now, there's different realms on it within these, and this is something that isn't talked about a lot. So let me, let me touch on this a little bit. You could, so there could be a woman that resonates as feminine energy in her embodiment, in the way that she carries herself, in the way that she wants to relate to the world, but her sexual essence could be more masculine energy. So there is different components to this. There could be a very masculine energy man who's like alpha dude number one, and then his sexual body could be more, more feminine energy. So this is different in different areas of life, and that's okay. No, we're multidimensional beings, right? So I, in relationship, resonate as a feminine essence being, which means that I am attracted to masculine energy beings, and I want to be the one bringing in the feminine pole. So there is two, a plus and a minus, right, to magnetism. Think of it like a magnetic pole, right? And so I want to be the feminine and I want to be with the masculine. So that's my natural state. Now, because of things that happened in my own childhood, I'm using myself as a self-aware Barbie example because I spent a lot of time there. <laughs> I know that one really intimately. I had childhood sexual abuse. I've shared my story with you guys before. I had some other trauma in my childhood, which put me along with my Western upbringing in my overactive masculine energy. So even though I resonate as a feminine energy being and I'm attracted to masculine energy beings, I myself became very masculine in my work and in the way that I was living. And, and what happened that I was bringing my masculine energy in all aspects of life and I was repelling masculine energy men because masculine energy men or women will not be attracted to more masculine energy. That's not how polarity is created. A plus and a plus magnet repels. It doesn't attract. And so I was repelling the very thing that I wanted to attract. So that's the stage of the self-aware Barbie. In speaking in um, nervous system terms, the self-aware Barbie lives on fight or flight. In fact, she loves flight. How this shows up in her everyday embodiment is an, a need to overachieve, overdo. She is addicted to to-do lists. This is going to be the woman that's number one in every, she's the number one in school, number one in her career, number one earner, right? She can do everything and she can do everything better than you. She, like, she's not thinking this, she actually can. This is what we know as the modern day superwoman. She, the reason that, I've asked God this many times, why self-aware Barbie, why Barbie? And the answer that I got several years ago was, look, think of the Barbie. I grew up playing with Barbie. Barbie wears many hats. You can change Barbie's outfit. She can be homemaker Barbie. She can be nurse Barbie. She can be um, going on a date with Ken Barbie. She can be making money Barbie. Remember Barbie? So that's how the self-aware Barbie is. 
She can be looking like a woman at the outside. Her hair is perfect. Her makeup is done. But her embodiment is very much fight or flight. And because of that, she's in her overactive masculine. And she desperately wants to be ravished by the divine masculine. But the divine masculine cannot ravish the wounded masculine. Even in same-sex relationship, there is always a masculine and always a feminine. That's just how it is. Okay? There's always one masculine and one feminine when it comes to their sexual bodies. And so the self-aware Barbie, her polarity within herself is out of sync. And so in her relationships, she can bring that like... Um, mother energy, that mothering energy, okay? She actually embodies the goddess energy in her embodiment, but in her relationship, she appears to be mothering her partner because there is like, you didn't do that right, put that over there, take out the trash, you do this, you put this over there, why can't you do this right, taking too long to do this, right? There's a queen of the world, I've got to do everything by myself, no one else can do it right. The biggest issue of the self-aware Barbie, like we talked about with the basic babe, her biggest issue is her perception, okay? Her, the the self-aware Barbie is her, she cannot receive and surrender. Her need for control. It's like asking the self-aware Barbie's nervous system that perceives there's a lion chasing her to stop and meditate in the middle of that. She's gonna be like, there's a lion chasing me. What do you, what, what? You want me to surrender? You want me to surrender to the lion. Is that what I'm hearing you say? So her nervous system is on overdrive. Now, as I shared examples of voice and tone with the basic babe, with, with that child, but Mina, you know, that mommy, that kind of a tone, with the self-aware Barbie, how you can know is their movements are very fast, okay? Um, the way that they reach for their car keys. The, like you, you're, you're eating, they're done. I used to finish a meal. I had a friend that told me, she gave me an ultimatum that she was never gonna go to a restaurant with me ever again unless I started eating. She said, these were her exact words. She said, it's like bringing a homeless person out to eat with you at a restaurant. She's like, you're eating like a maniac. I would like just swallow the whole thing down. And I didn't even know I was doing it. So by the time they're cutting their first like, you know, bite, I've like eaten the whole thing, okay? From my perception, when I was in the self-aware Barbie, the world was just so slow. Everyone is so slow. Move faster. Come on. Come on. Do this faster now. Hello. Today. Okay? So if you want to, if you go and park your car somewhere where people's walking around, by the end of this training, you should be looking at people and knowing. Okay? Sorry. <laughs> You'll just know. So even when they, um, what I train, when my primarily when people find me, they're in their self-aware Barbie. That's, that's who I work with most, right? The, the biggest thing first is to get them to slow down. That is the hardest thing for the self-aware Barbie. So we have to train them that they can't do what they do at work when they're managing their staff and their employees and their PA and then come home and bring that energy with, on a date or with their partner. That is going to repel masculine energy. And so because 90% of women are resonate as feminine essence beings, this is most women on the planet, but in the Western world, most of these women have become so highly masculinized like I was. So this doesn't mean that the self-aware Barbie is not going to ever use her masculine energy. I use my masculine energy intentionally i'm using it now i'm training you guys i'm teaching I'm, I'm very much in my masculine right now i'm guiding leading teaching holding space for you right but when i'm with my husband my energy shifts i need to be in my feminine in that point in, in that point because i want to create polarity when i'm with my children depending on whether i want to bring my masculine or feminine right so the inner work that the self-aware barbie needs is she's gonna need 
feminine and masculine wound training. So this is in, um, I have this in the sacred feminine intensive. She also needs to do the basic, um, the self-aware Barbie activated bundle. So I have a whole bundle. I've listed, by the way, in the description box, Team Universe Group, you can put the self-aware Barbie bundle in the chat. In the description box of this video, I put courses by, by stages and I put each bundle there for you. So she needs to do wounded masculine feminine work, energy work. She also needs to do shadow work. And she needs to integrate all different aspects of the divine feminine back into her. Right now, she's like a Barbie that lost all her other outfits and she's just in boss babe Barbie mode, right? She doesn't know how to bring in the sex kitten energy. She doesn't know how to bring in the mother energy. She doesn't know how to bring in the vixen energy, the um, you know, playful um, little girl energy all of the different flavors, the witch energy, there's so many, the high priestess energy, the million dollar babe energy, right? All of these different flavors. If you are working with people that are in their self-aware Barbie or self-aware Ken, they respond best to goddess energy. If you use mother energy with them, they are not going to respond well with that. Oh my God, they're not going to respond. They will feel like you're patronizing them, like you're speaking down to them. Luckily, my mother never used her mother energy uh, with us. She used her goddess energy, and I'm glad because I feel like that is what I respond to best, and I think a lot of immigrant mothers tend to use more of their goddess energy in their mothering than their actual mother energy. They save that for their adult relatives for some real weird reason. But anyways, I cannot stand it. That's why I only lasted in therapy for like a month or two. I had to like, I was just like, I can't, that's enough. I, I got what I needed because I just, I can't with the, oh, I'm so sorry you feel that way. Like we just, the self, the self-aware Barbie just can't deal with that state, like that sort of feedback. Not that there's anything wrong with that. The basic babe needs it. The self-aware Barbie is not going to respond well. So if you have sisters or a mom or friends or colleagues in self-aware Barbie mode, and you come up with them saying things like, that must have been hard for you and things like that, they're not going to generally respond well. It's not that they're gonna get overly triggered or anything, they may not say anything to you, but you're not gonna have the effect that you want to have on them, okay? Why do I recommend the self-aware Barbie bundle? The sacred feminine intensive will help you do the actual inner work of the self-aware Barbie to get you out of that. The self-aware Barbie bundle is needed because it is very hard for the self-aware Barbie's nervous system to relax long enough to actually focus on inner work. So what the self-aware Barbie bundle does, it's got 12 different courses in it, actually 14, but 12 in the high value level up bundle part, in which I will help you set up these 12 areas of your life, get your home in order, get your communication skills in order, get your parenting or inner child work in order, get your finances in order, because if these things are not right, your fight or flight will keep getting triggered and you can't relax. In fact, someone on Instagram, lots of someone's on Instagram were saying, Mina, how come you don't share your meals anymore? How come you don't share what you eat anymore? The reason I don't is because I don't wanna trigger the self-aware Barbies. So, when the basic babe is triggered, she goes back into that childlike, either childlike question asking or lashing out, depending on the stage. The self-aware Barbie, when triggered, spits out information. So she consumes a lot of information. You know, she's well-educated. She's had a lot of life experience. She's, she's a boss babe, right? So like she, she knows how to get it done. When she's triggered, she, because she's not embodied in anything she learns, it, it just, it lives here. And it takes, it, think of it this way, it's like an operating system with a lot of windows open. So when she's triggered, it's an opportunity for her to start closing these windows. And how she closes these windows is not really an effective way to close windows. She thinks she can close these windows by spitting out all this information at you. 
So if I wanted to do an experiment, and maybe I will, I've done these before, I could post a what I eat in a day video tomorrow, okay? And as an experiment, you can go in there and start tagging people. The people saying all the judgments, what you're eating is bad, that's, that's, that's wrong. But what if, what if questions, childlike kind of questions? But what's rice, Mina, what's rice? Okay, what are grains? So that kind, basic babes. The people writing out all of the things on nutrition all of a sudden, what you should be eating, what's right, what's wrong, what microwave setting you should be using, how you should hang upside down to eat, how you should cut your meat exactly, what doctors you should follow, what books you should be reading, who are they? Does anyone wanna put that in the, in the chat? The self-aware Barbies. So when the self-aware Barbie is triggered, she starts spitting out information. In fact, her mannerisms will speed up. She'll start moving faster, talking faster, and she'll be spitting out information at you. You're gonna die from cancer. You should read this book. You should not eat this. Keto is bad for you. You should do vegan. You should eat this. You shouldn't eat this. You should cut your meat like this. You should you know, color your red rice. I don't know, whatever. It's just this, this releasing of information. So talking is the cheapest form of releasing uh, stuck emotional energy, which is a lot of what is happening inside of the nervous system of the self aware Barbie. So that used to be me. That used to be me. I used to live in that mode, okay? People used to roll their eyes with all the information that I was like spitting at them, right? So. It's one thing to be teaching to people that want to learn from you, but imagine people who don't want to learn from you. They don't see you as anyone embodied and you're just like trying to tell them all the things. So unsolicited advice is the realm of the self-aware Barbie. And that took me a lot of inner work to get myself out of. So in my everyday life now, you can, you know, people will ask me, you know, things like, oh, what do you have on your face? Your skin looks so nice. Or, you know, why are you eating that? Or what should I eat? And I just say, thank you. Oh, thank you. You're so sweet. I do not give, even though it appears that they're asking, unless they're actually in a container with me where I'm coaching them, I have just shut myself off from that. So when you're embodied, Okay, you don't need to spit out this information at unsolicited bystanders, right? You don't have to. It's, it, you're wearing it. It's, in, it's oozing out of your pores. So that is the work of the Self-Aware Barbie. I recommend the Self-Aware Barbie bundle if you want to do that inner work of getting the things in order so you can actually start relaxing. Also have the 21 day and the struggle uh, course in there, which is short, very short, three minute practices that you can do for 21 days straight. They're going to hurt your nervous system. Like you're going to be like, oh, I can't, I can't, right? Because I make you sit down and like not do stuff to recalibrate your nervous system to like relaxing, okay? The self-aware Barbie, when she relaxes, it's not relaxing, okay? She, it's faux relaxing. It's not cellular level relaxing. I have coached so many self-aware Barbies. Most of my clients come to me in this stage where, uh, you know, I, I have the most famous example that I've used often is I was working with this really badass. I mean, she was you know, owned a multi seven figure a year business, doing super well. Um, I mean, built this business from nothing to multiple seven figures in like the shortest amount of time I've ever heard in my life. It's huge staff that she's managing all by herself. And she said, Mina, I am exhausted. I'm so burned out. I'm so tired. So we start working together and I'm going over her schedule, what she's doing and I mean, she would call me in the middle of the day from her car crying. That's how exhausted she was, okay? And I'm looking at her schedule and, and I'm getting to know her. And I'm like, but babe, you have Saturday and Sunday off. I know you're really tired. You're doing a lot. You're burned out. I hear you. You have Saturday and Sunday off. What are we doing on our weekends? And so I had her journal and document 
every minute accounted for, which is not hard for the self-aware Barbie. You guys know they, they're good with that kind of stuff. That's why I like working with them because when you give them assignments, they're like done. <laughs> they know how to do it. So she came back and she did, she had all of these activities on the list that were like rest like activities. Watch TV for three hours. Got my nails done. Read, you know, listen to this, this, and this on the news, whatever, okay? And she said, look, Mina, I rested, but I'm so exhausted on Monday. And I said, babe, I see that you pretended to rest. I see a lot of things on your list that are rest-like, but none of these things are rest for women. A lot of these things are not rest at all. And some of these things are rest for the masculine. And this is a key point. Listen up to this one. The way that the masculine, the divine masculine in both the feminine and, and both in men and women, when I think of, when I talk about energies, don't, please don't equate it necessarily to gender right away. This is true in, in both beings but it's, it's gonna be different caliber depending on how much are you. So I'm mostly in my feminine, like I, I'm, I would say 70, 80% feminine energy being, and then I like to use 20, 30% masculine energy. So I'm a feminine essence being at my core. My sexual body is feminine energy, right? My, my essence is fe feminine energy. So for someone like me, I can't do masculine energy type rest. So the masculine, when it rests, it empties out. There is a out breath. Now in our, the way that we are intimate, I'm not gonna get very graphic with you guys, but emptying out, you, you see what I mean? It's a release for the masculine. So it is above thought rest. So for a man who comes home from work and he's tired, zoning out on the computer or the TV or on his phone or with video games is kind of like a release. It's like a, I'm gonna zone out. If I do that as a feminine energy being, that's gonna make me more tired. That's not rest, okay? And of course, I could have a Netflix and chill day with my husband, but I'm not gonna lie to myself and pretend like that was like deep-seated feminine rest and like filled me up. So with the feminine, rest is filling me up. So we, when we are saying that we need rest, it should fill you up and be in overflow which means that rest for the divine feminine is below thought. Okay, so we're, we're not going above thought, we're going below thought. So like deep-seated rest, deep-seated, okay? So for example, a barefoot walk out in nature where you're listening to the birds and your, your feet are, like your, your um, soles of your feet are hitting the grass, that fills you up with something, okay? Um, depending on what you enjoy, this is gonna be different for people, but going out for a swim, a relaxing swim, okay? Reading a really amazing book by the fireplace, taking a luxurious bubble bath with Epsom salt and um, essential oils and rose petals, that's like one of my favorite things to do with like um, lots of candles. When I was in my self-aware Barbie mode, I would murder you if you said that you wanted me to take a bath. I would be like, that's a waste of time and a waste of water. I'm just gonna take a quick shower. Like who has time to sit in a bathtub? Because the self-aware Barbie is all about efficiency. For her, actual rest is too dangerous to her nervous system because she's been holding back all this emotional stress and trauma in her nervous system. She's been out running it her entire life. And now you're telling her to sit quietly for three minutes. She's gonna kill you. She's gonna be mad. Because what if it comes back up? Her, every ounce of her being has been hiding this stuff so she doesn't have to process it. It thinks it's protecting her from it. So anything that is risky enough to bring up those emotions that want to be processed and released, she's not gonna wanna do that. She might, she might as well just go to a noisy um, you know, spa where she's getting a, Maddie, a Manny and Petty and talking trash to her girlfriends about how little she sleeps 
because that is at least that's acting like self-care check to-do list check self-care done hashtag got it in yeah so the 21 day and the struggle course inside of the basic or inside of the self-care barbie bundle yep it, you're gonna hate me for 21 days i know i have heard it from my students but then you're gonna love me after 21 days because you're gonna start realizing how hard it is for you to like sit down and actually rest and then you're gonna start questioning yourself saying why why am i so afraid to sit down and slow down why it's like it's like someone put like multiple energizer batteries and like turned you up a few notches what does your fan say your your metrodome is like on high frequency or something i don't know he's got his own language to explain this stuff but let me see what you guys are saying before we move to the million dollar babe this makes so much sense heather said thank you heather always on the go with no processing yep it, she thinks it's, her nervous system thinks it's too dangerous for her to slow down because it's been protecting her from this emotional turmoil that it's like hidden away in her psyche somewhere. Okay. Let me see. A nap is a good one. I went through a huge napping phase when I was in the old house. Yes. And not so much now but yes napping is great okay all right we're doing good all right so i'm going to um move on to million dollar babe so the million dollar babe is the embodiment where you start controlling you have emotional control first and foremost you have been doing your inner work you're embodied in it and this isn't some kind of finished state of course it's a work in progress and you are aware of the difference between the masculine and feminine polarities and you become more fluid in how when and where you use them so you might be walking into a business meeting and you might close your eyes before you walk through the door kind of pull up more of that goddess energy, a little bit of that masculine energy, and just kind of like walk in like you own the place, okay? In the evening, when you come home, before you even go in, you close your eyes in your car, you play a little, you know, soft music, you take a few deep breaths, okay? Maybe you put on some feminine perfume, you change the way you're breathing, you start kind of slowing down you do some of the meditations that I've taught you guys, circulate that energy in your body, okay? Your face relaxes, you get that glow on, you're slow, your voice drops in, and then you walk in and you're like, hi. And your partner's like, hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Okay, so in this million dollar babe stage, there is a self-awareness and an embodiment in what energy and what flavor am I bringing to this moment. There is a owning of the dynamics of relationships within yourself, within other people. And so there is personal responsibility, personal accountability. There is an essence of health and harmony in everything that you do. And so you know which energies you bring to what. And speaking of the million dollar babes phase, I've been receiving some emails and I have some good news about this. I was getting emails over the years from people saying, Mina, you have a basic babe bundle and you have a self-aware Barbie bundle. Where is the million dollar babe bundle? So I had a lot of courses for million dollar babes, obviously, because I work with self-aware Barbies going into million dollar babes. And I never had a million dollar babe course. I had a million dollar money course. I had a million dollar manifesting course. I never had a million dollar babe inner work course. And so I decided, you know what? They are absolutely right. And so I'm currently in a pre-launch 
of the Million Dollar Babe course I'm enrolling. There is a pre-launch price, a pre-order price. So on 11.11, at 11.11, we are doing our first training in the Million Dollar Babe Inner Work course. And it's going to week, meet weekly for six weeks. There's going to be lots of bonuses in there. There's also a bundle that goes with it that has the manifest course inside and the manifestation muscle memory course inside. So if you buy the bundle, you can binge on the other courses, start the inner work there, and then as you wait for 11.11. Team Universe Guru, if you will please put the link for the Million Dollar Babe course first in the, in the chat and then the Million Dollar Babe bundle. All of this is also in the uh, description box and I'll put in the comments afterwards. The biggest challenge of the Million Dollar Babe is her tendency to revert back to self-aware Barbie at times and forgetting to trust the process. So she's very much embodied. She knows how to do, you know, use the different energies. She knows how to bring the different energies to her different dynamics, but she's a human. And she lives in a world where she's the highest level in our work, right? Like most people in most of our lives are not spending this much time, energy, money, resources on doing inner work. Let's be honest, right? Inner work is a necessity, but it is a luxury. It takes time. It takes energy. It takes resources. So because of that, not a lot of people are doing that level of inner work. And so because she lives with people that may not be at her level, she gets triggered back out of that state. And so when I work with million dollar babes, my job as their mentor, as their coach is to remind them to shorten the time in it takes to revert back. So I say, you will forget who you are. You will forget your embodiment at times, okay? We are human, we interact with other people, things happen, right? But how fast can you bounce back? What are your like dominant states? So just like the um, self-aware, the basic babe is addicted to drama and suffering. The self-aware Barbie is addicted to emotional suffering, hard work, making things harder than they need to be, addicted to creating problems and making things way hard, right? The million dollar babe is actually addicted to high vibrations, joy, peace, sakun, the word that I use, the Arabic word for inner peace, because she's addicted to that, it's easy for her to revert back to it. But the million dollar babe in our work comes with shortening the period in how fast you can bounce back. So you're not like got kicked out of the, that mode, the flow states, right? Catching the flow wave, you often hear me saying in my courses, if you get kicked off of the flow wave magic carpet, how quickly do you bounce back? Like actually process what's happened and bounce back. But she always bounces back because emotions are highly addictive states. And so because she lives more in joy and peace and happiness and abundance, she is addicted to those things just as the self-aware Barbie and basic babe are addicted to the suffering and the hard work, right? And so she does revert back but what's the route that she takes? Does she take the long scenic route or can she do it fairly quickly because of the progression of her inner work? So for, inner, for Million Dollar Babe, most of my courses are designed to take you out of million dollar, uh, self-aware Barbie into Million Dollar Babe. And then I have some courses that are Million Dollar Babe and above. Manifest is one of those courses. It is the highest level course I've taught to this date. I mean, the things in there that I've taught are absolutely next level. Quantum physics galore in there. People were saying their heads were spinning with the stuff, some of the stuff we talked about. Huge paradigms shifted. I mean, like every lesson it was like, oh my God, this is the best lesson I've ever heard. And then the next one was the best. Those of you guys that are in Manifest can probably vouch for that in the comments. It is the best course I feel like I've ever taught to this date. And then I have the high-end divinity, the you know, which which used to be called the aligned as femme. I've changed the name to high-end high end divinity now. I don't talk a lot about that stage because most people are not going to be doing that in our work. 
I save that stage for my graduates, meaning students of my university that are, have graduated from the other courses and then they can go on to that stage. The reason I don't talk a lot about that stage is because of this concept known as spiritual bypassing. What happens is when you use the terminology and the information of the high-end divinity stage, self-aware Barbies and basic babes will learn that information and start spitting it out and giving the illusion to themselves that they are embodied and they know this stuff. And they skipped a whole lot of steps. And so they are not embodied in it. And it can create a lot of problems in their lives because they're pretending to be embodied in something that they don't know very much about. So because of that, I've been asked, why don't you talk a lot about high-end divinity? I save that for my graduates, for people that I know have been doing the inner work with me. And these are you know, students of my work for many years. And then when they're ready, they call to me. They come to me and they say, Mina, I'm ready to be in the high-end divinity. What do I need to do? So that is something that they kind of grow into. It's a rite of passage that they earn through their inner work. And so that's why I don't talk about that stage a lot on YouTube, okay? Any questions coming up for you for any of these stages? I'm gonna stick with these stages and what we're talking about today. I'll take a couple of questions related to this course or any of the other courses. Take a sip of water. Um, someone said, what course do you recommend for the high-end divinity? I recommend the high-end divinity course. So this is a course, uh, I've changed the name. It used to be called Aligned as Femme, as I said. This course has, um, I don't remember exactly, but hours of content in it and, and lots of embodiment work that you can start. It, it's really deep work. And the great thing about it is that it's an ongoing course. So every year, at least once or twice a year, I relaunch the course, sign up new people that are ready for it now, and then we have new sessions in it, and all of the previous alumni are invited to it. So once you're in the course, you're in the course forever. This is also true of my Million Dollar Babe course. It's going to be an ongoing thing, so every year I will launch it and add it. My CEO Boss Queen is the same thing. I I have many courses that are ongoing and then many courses that are done digital courses where everything's in there already, every single thing that you need. I notice I fall in and out of self-aware Barbie and Million Dollar Babe. Yeah, that's that's gonna be most people doing this in our work and that's completely normal. I remember being in that stage as well. Um, the stage after that is where you use your self-aware Barbie intentionally. Let me give you an example of that. So when, I, when we were moving, I had decided, when we moved to our previous home, we had hired packers and movers and they had like, I, we literally just got in the car and like showed up here, right? So they did everything. So I had decided that I was gonna do the same thing, but then I realized that I couldn't do that because I needed to declutter and not bring a lot of that stuff into this house because this house came fully furnished. So anyways, I was like, you know what? Actually, I need to declutter this house and pack it myself so I know exactly what's going into the new house. So. I'm sure many of you guys remember this. I had announced this somewhere in one of my courses or maybe Instagram. I said, I am putting on my loungewear, my Lululemon, which is favorite outfit of some self-aware Barbies. I went ahead and actually put on Lululemon. I had to dig them out because you guys never see me sitting around in loungewear. I would never, right? So I went and I dug it out and I put it on and I literally announced, hey, I'm a self-aware Barbie today. And then I made a list of all the rooms that I needed to like, supervise or like get sorted and I literally acted like a self-aware Barbie and went and I attacked each room and I got it done in like two three days okay so I it's like it's like I made a joke out of it right I was like it's Halloween and Mina's self-aware Barbie for this like I pretended to like go into that and I got it done in that point I could have done it from the million dollar babe, sure, but million dollar babe answer was just hire a whole bunch of people and get people to do it for you. Like that's the easy way to do it, right? But I decided that I needed in that moment self-aware Barbie to come. So that's an example of how to do it in a conscious way. 
Is there something I can do to reduce the falling out so much? Yes. F figure out what triggers you out of it. Like really get into the micro level of it. What triggers you out of it? Get down to when I'm triggered out of it, what's happening inside of my neck? How does my heart rate change? What's happening in my solar plexus? How am I womb behaving? How are my mannerisms? Am I talking faster? Does my voice change? Do I dress differently? Did I eat differently? Did I not sleep for three days in a row? What are the indications that I'm about to be in there? Like I'm about to go that route. Like reverse engineer the entire experience of it and send, then change those environments so that you can catch yourself sooner. Instead of catching yourself two months into the self-aware Barbie, can you, can you catch yourself a month in, four weeks in, or I'm sorry, two weeks in, a week in, a day in? Can you catch yourself a day before you go into it? So you're gonna go so deep into it that you can now catch yourself before you even go into it, and that is the inner work. Is it possible to not be in any stage, but instead fluctuate between all of them? I resonate with all of them a little bit. So that's all of us when we're not doing our inner work. So if you really think about it, that's the basic babe. Because the basic babe may have one little self-aware Barbie moment. She might have a million dollar babe moment, but she's out of control. There's like, there's no intentionality in her life. There's no like, who do I choose to be? Who do I choose to express? What do I get to bring in this moment? What do I wanna create? There's no intentionality. It's just kinda like going through life. And that's how most people are in autopilot going through life. I'm not gonna say there's anything wrong with it if that's how you're choosing, but if, if that's not what you want, choose which stage you wanna be in and then get in that stage. Your decision is very powerful. You decide what stage you get to be in. So this stuff is supposed to help you get intentional in how you wanna live your life. So the life of this, the million dollar babe is one of ease and flow. She is the queen of make, let it be easy. She is the queen of, she's the one people watch and say, I'll have what she's eating. I'll have what she's having. She makes it look easy. It's effortless when you look at her. She gets a lot more done than the self-wear Barbie without spinning her wheels. There's this element of, this glow and surrender in her. And yet she's like, she's the silent boss queen, right? Like she has the, the, the kingdom. She has the man, she has the money. She's got the looks and the health. She has whatever she wants. That's, I'm not saying everyone wants those things, but she has whatever she wants. But without burning herself out, without being in fight or flight, without being triggered, without living a life that other people have said that she has to live, that's the work and the realm of the million dollar babe. So it took me a lot of inner work to get myself in that stage, obviously, and it's always a work in progress. Every year I'm learning, oh, I want this, I want that. That gets to be easy. That gets to be easy, right? Like this house that we've purchased was the biggest investment that my husband and I have made in one thing ever, like, you know, um, in, in a property at least. And but it was the easiest transactions we, we've also done. And that's because of our inner work. There's no way we could have bought this house, even though we could have afforded it a, a few years ago, we weren't at that level to have made it easy at that time. It, we could have done it, but it would have been harder. We would have done it from the self where Barbie and Ken there would have been some drama. We would have made it harder than it needed to be right. The self where Barbie, she thinks her desires are problems to be solved. And the million dollar babe knows that her desires are previews of what's to come from the divine. So she knows that it's just a preview. It's, it's already there. It, she's already getting it. She just has to prepare for it. And so it's a completely different way of living. So you, you see those people that have achieved a lot and have a lot, whatever they want. Now I'm not saying it's all material success. It's whatever they want, relationships, whatever. But they have this ease and grace about them they make it look easy. Those are the people, it is easy for them because they've decided that it gets to be easy for them. Their perceptions aren't twisted anymore. They're not in fight or flight anymore. They're in flow states and flow states have been highly studied. 
So this is the, this is not only a spiritual thing, it's very much a scientific thing. It, it's, it's a state that you can put yourself in. So the million dollar babe lives in the uh, flow state. She, she catches that flow wave and rides it, as I like to say, okay? Wow, I think I'm getting there. I'd say I'm a high level self-aware Barbie. Awesome, Gina, and I'm glad you put it that way. And, and I want you to notice how Gina put that because you have to understand that each of these stages are on a continuum, okay? So she, she's like in between the realms, okay? Really, really she's in between the realms of Million Dollar Babe and Self-Aware Barbie. You guys that are in the manifest course, you know what I mean in, from in between the realms. She's literally in between those realms. And so now the power of her, her decision and the power of her focus will dictate what becomes her dominant state, what gets programmed into her nervous system, into her energy body, into her emotional body, what becomes her normal, her new normal, okay? So that is the inner work stages. You made the spiritual knowledge that I have heard of before really grounded for me. Awesome, Heather, I'm so happy to hear that, okay? So um, ladies, I will let you guys go. Thank you so much for joining me. And I'm going to have all my links in the description box if you guys wanna do inner work with me. All of my courses are listed, well, some of my courses are listed below. And like I mentioned, they are listed by stages as well. And I'm super excited to be finally launching the Million Dollar Babe inner course. Now this is different from the Million Dollar Babe money course. In fact, in the course dashboard to make it easier for you, I have gone in and I've changed the Million Dollar Babe money course name to MDB money course so that you're not confused between the two in your dashboard, okay? Because we have people in the university bundle, which is all of my courses, this is my like spiritual PhD. And with the university bundle, you not only get access to all of my previous courses, all of my current courses, you get access to all of my future courses. So if I launch 10 more courses next year, uh, 10 different curriculums, you get access to that without paying a single penny more. It's like you're grandmothered in for life. So for when you look at your dashboard, I want it to be really easy and streamlined for you. So that's why I changed the name of that one. And like I said, the Aligned as Femme is now called high in divinity, as it was a high in divinity course. Okay. Could you tell us a bit more about the quantum self course? The quantum self course is also my ongoing kind of group coaching course. There's lessons in there right now, but I'm also, you know, that's something I'm gonna be relaunching every year and then adding more lessons. And that is for people that are in the million dollar babe and above that want to make uh, a lot of money very quickly and a lot of growth very quickly. So initially I had named that course 100K Months because I used the formula and everything that I've learned in having multiple, multiple, uh, you know, multiple six figure a month, months. Um, so I used, I taught you guys the formula that I used to create that. So the first, 100K month that I had, which was many years ago, and uh, I've, that number has grown and grown now. I use that formula, so I put it in there. So there's inner work there, there's spirituality in there, and then there's also like how can you call upon the resources to be able to summon up that sort of uh, abundance in your life. So that's what the self-aware Barbie, I'm sorry, the quantum self-activated course is. Thank you, S, I appreciate you. The manifest course is taking me deeper into the million dollar babe. That course is next level. In fact, that course will take you from million dollar babe to high end divinity. That course is deep. I know many of you guys are saying, oh my God, I'm watching each lesson three times. It has blown my mind. Uh, I knew it was going to be amazing, but what came through was even deeper than what I could have imagined. What course do you recommend to heal the masculine wound? I'm still triggered during dating and get attached easily. You could do either the basic babe bundle or the sacred feminine intensive. Either one would be great for you. Here's a little secret about my courses. 
no matter, I know that I put them by stages because it's easier for you to see what stage you're in and what you wanna go. But honestly, because there's so much inner work in all of them, that all of them help with all the stages because inner work compounds, it stacks up. So even people that are in million dollar babe stages go back and buy the million, the basic babe bundle and they're like, oh my God, I love the six step process. I love the 90 minute training on masculine, feminine, you know, um, polarities. I love the work on the law of attraction in there, right? So all of it helps. I've had people take my money course and said it changed their relationships. I've had people take the 90 day relationship rehab course and said it changed the way that they show up at work. Because why? Because you are a whole system being. It's not like I can say, I'm going to take this little inner work and inject it into your cheek and it's not going to affect the rest of you, right? So when you do any inner work, it up levels all of you. That's why you hear me saying inner work happens in layers. It awakens and activates in layers as well. So if you are ever in doubt, start with the basic babe bundle, hands down, start there. But if you already have that one or you're like, I want, I'm, I'm being called towards a manifest or I'm being called towards million dollar babe, go with your heart. And my team is trained that way too. If you email them and say, where should I start? Unless you say a specific problem that you're having, like with money or relationship, then they may be able to suggest based on that. But if you just say, what course should I start in? Here's what the script they're gonna send you. They're gonna say, start with the basic babe bundle, Unless your heart is really being called towards something else, always, always listen to your heart. That's what they're going to tell you because that's what I believe. All right. What course do you recommend for those interested in teaching this work? So I would recommend taking the courses that you are interested in teaching. And then I have a ton of business courses. So I have the CEO Boss Queen, which is an ongoing course. Oh my God, that is my favorite business course because of the relationships that the girls in there have formed with each other. They're doing like group things together, group podcasts, group YouTube channels, group spa days. I love it. They're going to each other's weddings. Like it's this next level sisterhood in there. And that one I launched several times a year. In fact, I'm getting ready to launch it for the last time this year. And that's going to be happening on the Million Dollar Babe channel um, next week. I'm starting the launch for the CEO Boss Queen. So that one has everything to do with launching your business, you know, marketing, the spiritual work. It's like the spiritual MBA of business. But it's if you want, for example, let's say you're like, Mina, I want to teach feminine energy work. Then I would say take the feminine energy mega training so you can learn actually the work and then take the business course, couple it, and you know how, what to teach and how to do it. So if you wanted to teach um, the work in, uh, uh, um, for like coaching, for life coaching, then I have a conscious uh, coaching couture, I think it's called course. That will teach you my formula that I actually use to coach my students. And the Femme Fortune container course is in there. So I've got different levels, but you can take a course along with the business course and learn how to be able to teach it. I hope that makes sense. I'm between million dollar and self-aware. I love your courses. How do you maintain a loving relationship with basic babe parents? Okay, that's a good question. So the first thing I'm going to remind you is that when they are triggered, they revert back to a childlike state, which is not rational. Arguing with people in that state is, is useless. It's just, it's like, it's like arguing with a child in a grocery store that's like laying down throwing a full on tantrum because you said no, they can't have the candy, right? They're, you can't argue with them. They're actually gonna win because the louder they get, the more embarrassed you're going to be. So I don't, walking away, and when we're both calm, I'm gonna come back. So you might have to use a very calm kind of mother language, and I'm, I, I'm sorry because I know they're your parents, but you're gonna have to be the adult in this dynamic. Also know that even though they tell you this and they make you believe this, it's not your fault that they're triggered. Please don't feel like you have to walk on eggshells. It can be really difficult to be in relationships with basic babes. I've been there and 
Um, I was in self-aware Barbie, so I blamed myself for everything. That's another thing with the self-aware Barbie. Because she's self-aware, she blames herself. And so I was led to believe that there was something wrong with me, that I had to be better, do better, speak better. I kept hearing things like, you always embarrass me, you always trigger me, I can't take you anywhere with me, uh, you always say the wrong things, you can't speak right, everyone thinks you're dumb, you're making, you know, all this stuff. And so I kept thinking, okay, I just have to be better. And I kept triggering them. And once I learned this inner work and, and these stages and, and all, I'm like, oh my God, it's like, it's a child, right? Like that's the stage that they're in, the consciousness. So don't blame yourself. Don't think it's you just because they're acting illogical. Now, if you're dealing with the kind of basic babe that's dangerous, meaning throwing tantrums out in public, blaming you, throwing things and things like that, you're going to have to come up with better boundaries. That's one thing I really struggled with. I have rock solid goddess boundaries now, but God knows I struggled with that for most of my life. I felt intense guilt in having boundaries. And um, so that can be difficult, but you're going to have to make it really clear, just like you would to an unruly child, that this is not acceptable behavior, that there are consequences for, for behaviors, right? So um, I hope that helps. Yes, I've experienced the tantrums. Okay, thank you, Mina. I had uh, to parent them and walk away. This helps so much. Yeah, and it's sad. It's really sad when you didn't get proper parenting from them and then the roles are reversed and now you have to parent them. And I know it's unfair, but unfortunately, those are the cards that you've been dealt with. And I, I'm here to tell you that I have many, many clients that had basic big parents and they were in self-aware Barbie, my clients, and they are now having relationships that are calmer. I'm not going to say they're perfect. I'm not going to say their parents just like all of a sudden like did their inner work through my client. It doesn't work that way. But my clients had enough emotional control and um, we, you know, we teach ways to diffuse the situation versus escalate the situ situation. So it's called de-escalating a situation to a point where you're not getting trapped in that cycle. Because what the basic babe likes to do is bring you down to their level right? And, and they, they get a high out of that. That's exactly what they're looking for. And so once we get you to not be that level of a cocaine for them, that level of a high for them, then um, they're going to find other sources for that. And you can have sort of a semi-normal relationship with them where you can go and say hi and hang out and have a 10-minute phone conversation, see each other on Christmas, things like that, and, and, and get along. You know, in some cases, I, I've also seen this where the parents or the other relatives were so impressed with my clients inner work that they started doing their inner work. Okay, so I, I'm not saying this is for everyone because I don't want to give you false hope that everyone's going to start doing their inner work because we know that people just don't. They're on autopilot these days. It takes a lot of courage to do inner work, let's be honest. So I'm not going to sell you false hope on that, but I have seen it. I have seen it that one person's inner work inspired someone else's inner work. But at the very least, it can get to a point where you can have a working relationship with them, right? Because we have family obligations, we have things we have to do, and we, we need to be able to get along for those, okay? This work is up-leveling me and my parents. My mom watches Mina and has taking, taken many courses and we're now in therapy together. I love that for you, babe. So thank you for saying that. There you go. That's an example of what can happen. And I have many students now that say that they watch my content, my lives and my content in groups. So, you know, mom and three daughters or husband and wife or mom and son. So I really, really appreciate, appreciate that. In fact, I got a comment last week on the Million Dollar Babe channel Someone said they were a 24-year-old male whose mom turned them to my work. So it, it does happen. You know, sometimes when we do our inner work and we change and evolve so much that people start noticing the people that we love. And then they're like, well, I want to do my inner work too. So it, it, it can happen. The reason I don't want you to go into it that way, because sometimes what can happen then is that you're waiting for them to come with you. And sometimes you must go alone. You must take the first step alone. And so don't bank on them doing it, but um, you know, have, have faith and you never know. 
okay? All right, babes, I am going to let you go. My kids are probably wrapping up their tutoring. Uh, I, I try to time this when my kids had their uh, tutoring. They're learning another language. I love you guys so much. All of my links are in the description box. And subscribe if you're new here. Give this a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.